Welcome, Gina. Hello. Hi there. So I'll, I might just jump right into uh, how I found out about you. You came across my radar from a patient, actually, who told me that they were doing a weight loss program. And then she started referring her family. And then I had all of these patients who were doing your program on Facebook. And all of them were making really great changes with their health. They were they were starting to implement a lot of things that we were recommending that they do with regards to their nutrition. And yeah. so I decided to check out your program myself. So I joined a couple of years ago. Love it. Admittedly, not perfectly, but I got a taste of what your program <laughs> offers, which is, is great. And and so I started referring it to, uh, to people because uh, there's so many things I like about it. And so thanks so much for joining me to talk about it with my audience. Can I ask, can I, can I ask, like, I'm sure you must be like, people come to you all the time wanting to lose weight. You're like, oh, what, like, what diet is this? What program is that? Like, so what did, what did you think when, what was your first initial like thought versus like when you actually got into it? I'd love to hear. Yeah, this is great. That's a great question. Yeah. Well, people will sometimes tell me that they're on a program. It'll be something like whole 30. And so usually there's a list of good foods and bad foods. Mm, yeah. Or there's some sort of restriction, right? So there's the classic like caloric restriction or food restriction or uh, elimination of certain foods, which is all well and good. But sometimes I find that what, what, you know, what I'm understanding about their health and what they're implementing doesn't always overlap completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so many of my patients need blood sugar regulation. They need to take care of their adrenal glands and not stress themselves out too much. Like a lot of people want really fast results, but yeah, everybody, truth, yeah, everybody <laughs> does. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is that that often backfires and just results in regaining and, you know, and discouragement and defeatedness and, and all of the psychological things, the, the guilt yeah. and binging and so with your program, I really liked that it was template based, which I'm sure you'll talk about more, but uh, so people could select their own foods and that it was really, uh, and maybe you'll talk more about this, but it, it really was geared towards regulating blood sugar. Mm. And so people had really good success on it. They weren't hungry um, and they were implementing very good habits that, that they could sustain. Yeah. And so yeah. that was really uh, nice to hear. And so I was really curious to see, okay, what exactly is it? How does it work? And, you know, and like, it, it's always good for me. I, you know, when people come for weight loss, it's not my favorite thing to treat as a naturopath, yeah. I have to say. Yeah, I hear you. Yes. <laughs> and Get so it's it. always well, nice to refer. It's not just weight loss. Usually there's so many underlying issues and it's just, uh, you know, people talk about a holistic approach. It's not any one thing that you're doing. Chances are that's stopping you, causing you to gain weight or stopping you to lose weight. And it's, it's hard, I think, because the diet industry has made it so easy. Eat less, exercise more. And it's not just that easy. If it was just that easy, we wouldn't, you know what I mean? Obesity wouldn't be an epidemic and people would be not only losing their weight, but easily sustaining and main maintaining their weight. And it's so much more complex than that. I noticed you, met, you mentioned insulin which you know i um i used to talk a lot about believe it or not um insulin resistance definitely trying to educate people on that you know spiking of their insulin levels and then it just became this kind of really buzzwordy thing that people specifically focused on and so there's a lot of like addressing that built into the program in a way that just is just um, super basic. Like I generalize a lot when it comes to the program, but like people get freaked out by eating more often throughout the program, which we suggest in the beginning, but like their, their issue probably more with their insulin is overeating these large portions. So going long periods of time without eating. And then when they do eat overeating and then, you know, maybe not having a lot of sugar, but when they do have sugar, having a lot of sugar, like, and that really just, re I don't think people realize how some of their choices that they're making are stressing their body out. And to your point with your adrenals, between your blood sugar and stressing your body out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You, it, it's all about this need for the body to reinforce about reinforcing the body's need for fat. And if someone has gained weight, it's because they've told their body that they needed to store this fat through through long periods of time, times of eating high stress, lack of sleep, you know, obviously through health issues and whatnot and stuff like that. So, so it's interesting that you mentioned that you mentioned that because it was a big part of the program before it's still there and it's still the focus, but I think the way we try to, 
to frame it for people as just more generalized. But people understand eating, right? And drinking water, but don't really realize how all the other things that like sleep and stress and all that factor in. So I, I can imagine it's a rabbit hole for you is my whole point. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, you know, I mean, a lot of people just, the whys are there and they're implicit and people just kind of want to know what to do. Like, just give me the strategy. Just tell me what to do. Yes. Hold me accountable. Give me some yeah. support and yes. give me results. <laughs> and, yes. you know, yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. How did the, the program come to be? Maybe you could start by uh, I know that you have a background in personal training and coaching and and what kind of things did you see as a personal trainer and how did the Livy method come to be? Yeah, so I um, I just randomly got into fitness at the age of 14 by going to my local Y. The Y was the place to go back then. I went with a friend. I saw these kind of fitness classes being taught and people like hooting and hollering and, you know, just getting like having fun exercising. And for some reason, I was really attracted to that and then um, started teaching classes, then going through personal training and, you know, throughout high school, you know, that was sort of, you know, one of the jobs that I had. And then when I went into university, um, I joined a gym and then started working there. One of the jobs I had working my way through university. And so I never really had a weight issue. I probably was like hovered around what I am now, like 125, 130. When I was in high school, I definitely dabbled in diets. You know, like I remember one time I did the 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 hot chocolate diet with my friends where we wouldn't eat all day and we'd go to the mall and get a hot chocolate and that'd be it like it's so weird random I don't know why <laughs> I've heard of um, the cake diet I've heard many I, <laughs> yeah. you know and I and I look back at my friends now none of us needed to lose weight so I think it was just sort of it was cool to do diets back in the day mm -hmm. um and so you know and it was just so freely talked about and people tried anything that I guess we just did it so, but when I got to university, um, my weight really started to come on and it was interesting to me because I was exercising more than I ever have in my life, hardly eating anything because that's how you lost weight. You eat less, you exercise more. And I was just doing those things, not because I was trying to lose weight, but but in doing those things, I, I just, my weight just kept coming on, coming on, coming on. And then I remember going to my doctor one time and, and saying, there's something wrong with me. My goodness. And this was before people talked about thyroid. And, you know, insulin wasn't like, no one talked about that. No one talked to like, this is well, the 30 years ago. And so I said, there's gotta be something wrong with me. And, you know, probably adrenals, probably, you know, and it's probably a variety of different things. Um, and he's like, well, you're eating too much, eat less. And I'm like, I was eating maybe like a muffin in the morning and go all day, maybe have a salad, maybe have a slice of pizza, like every now and then I was a student, you know? Uh, and I'm like, that can't be it. Cause I figure, you know, ballpark 600 calories a day, like barely. And he's like, well, maybe you need to exercise more. And I'm thinking I, I, I make money per class, you know, so I'm teaching two, three classes a day. That can't be it. Mm -hmm. And we're not, we're talking hardcore. It wasn't no, you know, not, not to disrespect Pilates cause that can be hard and get your heart rate up. But this was like, go till you drop, you know, if you didn't, if I, if you did my class and you didn't leave wanting to throw up, it wasn't a good class. Like the hardcore, like fitness, mm -hmm. um, good old 80s style. Um, and then, um, so then he's like, well, you must be big bones. And I was like, I just, my, in a year, my bones grew big. Like, is that how that works? I didn't know. So it was interesting. So that was my takeaway is like, what the heck is going on? And then I sort of fast forward. I was, I was, I, I, I was done university. I was working at a gym in the city. I met a guy and this guy was a chef and you know how you go out to um you, you know you date and you eat stuff so um we were dating i was eating um and uh, i remember he stayed at my place once and he's like you have no food in your fridge and i'm like yeah i'm on a diet and he's like you exercise more than anyone i know like you should be this like so skinny like how do you what and I'm like, I know, right? It's weird. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I remember that was a very defining moment because it was like, yeah, like what is going on? And then funny enough, the more he, the more I ate and going out for dates and he would cook food, the more weight I would lose. And all of a sudden I'd start losing weight. And people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I swear I'm eating. And then something just triggered in me to like try to figure out why, why of a sudden I was eating more. Do you know what I mean? And, and all of a sudden I was losing weight. So I went down this rabbit hole of like, 
how food breaks down in your body and that there was no internet back in the day like there was microfiche at the library like there was no do you know what i mean like reading old journals there was no they just pop on the internet and try to figure it out and so i'd read books on toxins there was a while there i ate all organic you know which is great i don't do that now but and some but um <laughs> i just went into this whole deep dive into what the heck was going on and so i ended up losing quite a bit of weight i think like almost a hundred pounds within like eight months. And then the rest of it, probably within the year. Um, and people kept asking me why. And so I was kind of like journaling and documenting what I was doing. And so anyway, that's how I kind of came up with the things that I'm now fast forward 30 years um, and helping individual clients over the years. I've packaged that all up and I put it into these big Facebook groups where I now teach people everything that I've learned through helping people lose weight. So what worked for me turns out works for everybody, um, obviously with a, you know, with a few little tweaks here and there. And, and one of the things I do is teach people how to make it individual to their needs. So if they have thyroid issues, if they are a diabetic, if they have any kind of health issues, you know, dietary needs, restrictions, you know, allergies, cultural backgrounds and needs, you know, that's why we don't do to look to your point, uh, like a strict meal plan. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a food plan and, you know, tells you what to eat and when, but there's a lot of flexibility in that. So, so that's sort of my own story, you know, is that everything that I was taught to help other people wasn't working for me it sent me down this rabbit hole of figuring out what I needed to do and then then through doing that I just been helping other people for the last 30 years lose weight and now I do it through these big groups where I teach other people how to do it themselves essentially with our program so what was the question yeah that's that answers it that's incredible that's so you know I'm not surprised but I'm I'm still shocked to hear the the kind of advice people get when they go to medical professionals right it's like well eat less you're like how i'm eating less than a six-month-old baby yeah it's hard because you know the doctors like i love doctors obviously i have mad respect for doctors and then you hear about i don't actually know how much they study about nutrition in school i don't i can tell you though that i've had a lot of doctors as personal clients mm -hmm. and so they may be a great family physician they may be a great surgeon but that doesn't mean that they know how to prioritize themselves make time for themselves to you know eat the things that they need to eat and i think they've always just gone on these whatever diet is working like i i heard somewhere a statistic that less than 1% of people that go to their doctor actually walk away making change that their doctors suggest, you know? So mm -hmm. I don't know how much doctors know or get into, um, you know, like nutrition. Mm -hmm. I know there's nutritionists and, and dietitians and whatnot and kind of work in that realm, but I've been around long enough to see the evolution of diets. And it's just, even I am like, why can't the smartest people in the world who deal in nutrition get together and figure out honestly straight up what i figured out like it's not rocket science i think everyone's trying to figure out their niche and what is their quick fix and what's their money maker and so i don't know if everyone's focused on that but it's not hard to figure out i've, I've spent 30 years helping people one-on-one -on -one, and I've learned a lot from that, what people need physically, what people need mentally, what people need to do, not just to lose it, but to stay, sustain it. And I can't figure out why other people can't figure it out. I'm excited. I'm going to the, we're going to the obesity conference uh, in Whistler uh, in another couple of weeks. And we have a, a team at the University of Ottawa studying the program. And I can't wait to get it out there to people and, and more and more doctors and people like yourselves are referring our program because it's not rocket science it's just how to eat healthy 101 pay attention to yourself prioritize yourself be in tune with yourself like you can't count weigh, and measure your way to sustainable weight loss it doesn't make any doesn't make a lot of sense you know yeah it's like that analogy of like holding a beach ball underwater while the tub yeah. is filling up it's like how long can you sustain that before like it all it's just, just explodes. I, how much less can you eat? How much more can you exercise? And people still aren't losing weight. Like it, it, it seems like that double down on calories in versus calories out. It's just like people are so stuck on that. And yeah, you can lose weight that way. You can lose weight in any quick fix diet. It's just that you're not going to sustain it and maintain it, you know? And I mean, I know about you, you want, you don't want to just put a bandaid on someone's health issues. You want them to, to, to address it and, you know, to, do you know what I mean? To be able to move past it or be able to manage it in a way that they can live a full sustained life, you know? So it's, yeah. So doctors, 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 like I get their sort of, you know, jadedness on people losing weight and I get their like, not really, you know what I mean? Keeping up with the latest in nutrition. And I, I don't know what that disconnect is, but. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then so you, you found your own path. It just kind of happened where you're like, I'm eating more and probably feeling better energy and feeling better and losing weight. I wonder if yeah. this will apply to others. Always had an interest in it. Still do. I, I'm still just as fascinated about, I still don't, I think I don't know anything really still at this point. I'm still open to learning and, and I'm all about new science and you know what I mean? I'm, I'm always kind of tweaking things a little bit th there, but I'm, I'm super fascinated in it because it seems, I know it's strange, but we're like the only species on the planet that doesn't eat when we're hungry, sleep when we're tired, drink when we're thirsty. Like we we're counting, weighing and measuring to try to figure out what we need. Like it's so not intuitive. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're so, as a species, so brilliant and we have this amazing mind body connection and we talk about it, but it's just like, it shouldn't be this difficult. And I'm fascinated by the fact that, you know, people find it so hard. It's just, it's like, are we making it harder than it needs to be? I'm not really sure. Then I'm also fascinated by people's lack of patience. That's another one. I have four kids, so I don't know if that's where I have patience for days, but people need to do things really quickly and not put the time in. And it's just... I find it all really fascinating. So I, you know, I could talk for days, which is why I appreciate you having me on. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. I want to get into the patience piece, but I want to ask a little bit about the program. Like your journey is very, um, from what I've seen in many people that run programs with large, like what kind of large scale programs, you followed a similar trajectory where it's like, we first work on ourselves. Then we start working mm -hmm. one-to-one. -one, we get success with that. We sort of extract what's working in these one-to-one -one encounters with a group and then we start reaching more and more and more people and then so it's like you're kind of extracting the nectar of truth through all of these yeah. encounters and now you're reaching tens of thousands of people which is incredible congratulations yes. yeah Thank you. that's amazing yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah going to the obesity con uh the obesity conference getting your method studied what i mean you don't need to spill your secrets but what's i will yeah <laughs> what's the yeah, um right. how does the living method work <laughs> So the living method, it's a very systematic way to help people make change. So like the first few weeks of the program is all about just focusing on giving the body what it needs to address why it's feeling a need to store fat. And so this is where we have people eat, eating healthy food quite often throughout the day. There's like a rhyme and reason to the food plan they offer, like, you know, going higher protein at breakfast. It's, and it's not a high protein program. So starting your day, as you know, with higher protein is, is, is a great way to start your day. It keeps your insulin levels a little bit lower. Like no one needs a bagel first thing in the morning morning you're you're not eating to give yourself energy you know you're you're replenishing energy when you wake up you're already full of energy um you know um fruit snack in the morning and that's just like fruit on its own and that's like so many people are afraid of fruit for years of dieting so so you'll find that my program on a surface level about the food but it's so it's got it's so multi-layered and it's designed to to mess with people's heads and to bring up feelings and to help them get in tune to their body's actual needs over wants um and then um and that that sort of changes as we go the snacks and stuff and then you know lunch is the the focus on the vegetables, proteins, leafy greens, healthy fats, heavier carbs, things that, you know, rice and, you know, quinoas and stuff better, better suited at lunch when you have the whole day to utilize the energy from them. And definitely not a low carb program either, more right carbs, right, right time, afternoon snacks. Um, first one is sort of vegetables. You can add some nuts, sorry, add some cheeses and dips and stuff like that to it. Just, you know, people when they have a bigger lunch tend to not eat because I'm so full when, you know, eating stimulates your digestive system. So if you do overeat your lunch, it's a great idea to have something else afterwards, nuts and seeds in that afternoon time, three or four o'clock time where people, their, their energies take a dip, their, you know, which is their, their bodies are naturally wired to take a dip in energy. And a lot of people go looking for a sugar or caffeine rather than, you know, nuts and seeds that, you know, keep your digestive system going, your body working, and also have protein and fat that feed into your satiety hormones, making you feel more satisfied. And then of course, dinner, and you're heading into dinner, which, you know, really your body should be winding down, you know, prepping you for sleep shortly after dinner. So, you know, the, the focus there is protein with your, you know, your, again, your carbohydrates, your vegetables, your leafy greens for roughage, because no one eats as, as many leafy greens as they really need to, um, healthy, good fat. So the program itself, if you dissect it, it's not rocket science. The reason why we um, have, one of the reasons we have people eating so often is you have take people who go from not eating all day, under stimulating their digestive systems, not eating enough to getting their body more, a 
adjusted and accustomed to eating more often. And then you're you're spreading the food out. So people, this is one way to help people kind of start in a sly way to manage portions. When they are spreading their food throughout the day, they will find that when they're consistently doing that, the size of their larger meals decreases naturally. Mm-hmm. And people are eating way too much food because what happens is people get used to you, you eating a certain amount. Not that they need that amount, but they get used to it. So we don't count, weigh, and measure in terms of portions. So one of the things that we do have people People eat often nutrient rich foods um, to satisfaction, meet their body's needs, allow their body to adjust to that, which usually leads to, you know, naturally smaller portions, um, being in tune. You, you take people who can go all day long without eating, all of a sudden they start eating and they're like, why am I hungry? I'm like, well, because you're paying attention to your body and you're giving it what it needs. So it's communicating back to you. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So so there's a rhyme and a reason. It's so multi. I could talk all day about the rhyme and a reason, all the little nuances behind the program. So that's the base to get people started. And then as we go week to week to week, we sort of change the focus. So first few weeks, give the body what it needs. It's we're not actually trying to even lose weight at that point. We're just really focused on giving the body nutrient rich food resources to make change and bringing awareness. And then the middle part of the program is by making changes each week, um, helping the body specifically focus on fat loss is where we get into portions. Like, for example, for portions, we ask four questions. So bringing awareness to before you eat something, how are you going to feel if you eat it? Right. Like if you were to eat this whole thing, how would you feel? And, you know, already because your body's made so many associations, like, you know, if you're in a buffet line and you're piling on the food, you know, you know, it's too much. Like, you know, you look right? down and then you're course, like, uh... <laughs> yeah, this is too much for me. I'll probably eat it, but it's too much for me. And um, while you're eating, like, you know, how are you feeling while you're eating? Like, how do you know you're starting to feel satisfied? And then and then how do you know when you're done eating so many people? don't know what it means to eat to satisfaction they're like what does that mean and i'll be like what do you mean what does it mean they'll be like well how do i know when i'm satisfied because a lot of people have been taught to just clear their plates right or they eat until their belly is like like full full so helping people get in tune with it what it means to feel satisfied is is actually a like it's a major topic of conversation and then, and then how do you feel afterwards and then so we use a variety of techniques um eating more often um splitting up meals and snacks you know purposely downsizing which is decreasing the amount of food that you are consistently giving your body and um and 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 to 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 towards the end it's all about you know what your body needs and getting in tune to your body's needs and recognizing your body's needs change day to day. So this is where we kind of phase people from a very structured process in the beginning to understanding what their body needs and helping them eat more in tune to their needs. Whereas one day you might be really, this is why calories don't make any sense because one day you might be super hungry and need more and the next day like need less. This is very evident. I don't know if you have kids, but in in children, you'll have kids who will eat you at a house and home one week and then the next week they're not eating anything and they're just naturally in tune. And that's just how the body is. But because we count and weigh and measure everything that we assume that our body's needs are the same every day. So it's really give the body what it needs, address its needs, help the body specifically focus on fat loss and then support the body in its needs. So a lot of times when people do a program, as they go through, it becomes more of a fight because when people are trying to lose weight, they start to eat even less, exercise even more. When for some people, it's about actually eating eating more and, and really feeding into what their bodies need. So it's a very systematic process. It's a lot easier than what I just explained. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where one week leads into the next, leads into the next, where each week we're approaching weight loss from a variety of different angles, um, not just physically, but also mentally, working through issues and associations and habits and beliefs. There's like so much that goes into sustainable, maintainable weight loss. So it's a three month process for that. Um, and that really came about of me taking little bits of pieces that does work from the diet industry. I've, I've come to know what works really well and then what doesn't work and cut through all the BS and kind of pack packaged it up in a how to get healthy, you know, 101, which really leads to losing weight, you know, Um, because when you when your body's healthy, it doesn't really have a need to store excess fat when you address that and help the body release that fat that leads to sustainable weight loss. So yeah, so it sounds complicated. It's 12 weeks. It's a lot easier like than what I described. It's just there's a lot of working parts to it. It's it's hard for me to explain the, my own process because there's so many different working parts to it. Like, for example, we have this um, thing called maximizing where we have this checklist. I think there must be a 100 things on the checklist of things you can do 
besides food and water and any supplements to be proactive with losing weight, like managing your stress and managing your sleep and the stuff nobody talks about, mm -hmm. you know? So there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. A lot of times people can feel a little overwhelmed when they start. And I say, good. It's yeah. a lot of information because we want it to be the last diet that people ever, ever, ever do good because you have a lot of questions. We want to make sure you answer them, but you, you should learn if you don't already know, and you've been trying to lose weight for 20 years, what your body needs to lose and maintain and sustain your weight. You, you got some stuff to learn. And so we, you know, we're here to kind of share, share what I know with people and it's working really well. People are having great success. They're actually sustaining, maintaining their weight. We're documenting it. We're studying it and people are getting healthier in the process, which is really exciting. It's so great. Yeah. 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 It's not, it's not that complicated process and you do eat. Not, thank you. It. Yeah. Like it's like the first week is kind of like, here's the plan, but don't worry too much. Like it's very soft. It's not, <laughs> it's not guilt inducing. It's not restrictive. And there is like a very uh, good psychological component because yeah. a lot of people like I, for example, but a lot of patients and uh, have fear around being hungry, like hunger yes. triggers a stress response. And so mm -hmm. you feel yeah. really satiated. Like a lot of patients are like, I'm way overly full at the beginning of the program. <laughs> and that's yes. the stress. Like yes. I, I'm eating all the yeah. time, but that like calms and provides safety to your body. And then there's always, uh, you're not taking food away from people. Like you, you get yeah. carbs, you get cheese, you get nuts, like fruit, <laughs> all of the scary foods. And uh, yeah, and it's building like a foundation, you know, for yes. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what it is. So like it's, it's building that foundation and building on that, you know, that's, and this need for people to like do things perfectly is very paralyzing for people. It's gonna, gotta be all or nothing. And there's a lot of guilt and there's lots like the food, like food issues, like where do people get that? I mean, probably most people that I know, most people you know are lucky enough to actually not have to deal with any real like food scarcity issues, you know, like there's no real lack of food. So a lot of that is self-induced on dieting and that that feeling of starving depriving triggering losing gain it all back it's very complex that you know people's issues and like they talk about the diet industry being very detrimental to people's mm -hmm. mental health and and that's like mm -hmm. you know that's a rabbit hole for so many reasons people you know they spend years dieting and they're just they don't know what to do and they're really paralyzed and they're I, people afraid of fruit people afraid of nuts people afraid to eat people thinking that their body hates them and is trying to screw them. People thinking eating good foods, even like breads and pastas, they don't make you fat. It take, minim, minimizing them while you're trying to lose can definitely help with the process. Drop down you know, the insulin that your body's used to utilizing and stuff like that. But the, the, those foods never made you fat, you know, and, and people's fear of food is just, it's craziness, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, there's a lot, there's fear a lot. Food. Yeah, there's a whole mindset thing around it. Yeah, I should have used some of my program because you, yeah. you said it all so well. You you said that in like thirty seconds. It took me four minutes. I should, yeah, good. Well, I have I've have been recommending it so <laughs> just behind the scenes, but I see yeah atomic habits on your desk and yes. there is yeah and for sure like a a mindset shift that has to happen and so you know within a three month process like you're taking people through it in yeah. a, I think a really nice way in that like first you're calming their bodies down they're not hungry yes. they're not yes measuring weighing they're not too much in the head although of course like yes. there is obviously some planning and there's some head stuff involved and it takes a while for someone to bring their attention and connection to food from their from the head to the yes it does make body yeah yeah, I wish, you know, that's sort of something I'm excited because I'm talking more and people are more open to that conversation, you know, that mind body connection is a is a real thing, you know, self love prioritizing getting out of your own way, you know, like dealing with your issues and associations it's it's such a big part of that that I wasn't really this is my 19th group I'm, I'm running and I wasn't able to talk about these kinds of things in the beginning, I would have just lost so many people and, and now people are starting to talk about you know that that sort of that mind body connection their internal dialogue their past traumas attached to food like they're more open i think to to dealing with those with those kinds of things which are which i'm really loving that conversation that we get to have i think a big part of our we'd have to be, be remiss not to talk about the environment and community 
squares. We do provide with the Facebook group specifically. I mean, more and more people are just using the app and buying our book, which and listening to podcasts, which is great. But for a lot of people, they need that community. They need to save space. They need people to answer their questions and you know, kind of doing that in that safe environment, I think too, is a, is a big key factor for a lot of people and also to feel like they're not alone, mm -hmm. you know, in their journey or they're not the only one feeling this or not the only one that feel, feel that. So I think just as much about the logistics of the program, what to eat and when is, is so much for a lot of people, the support, the safe environment, our amazing community. You know, I think that that could be a, a massive game, like 95% and we do surveys at the end of the program, uh, people say like the community is factored into their their success, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's a that's the thing that, you know, is important to me is just whether it's in the Facebook groups or on, or on our social media or whatever that is, is, you know, is that sense of community, I think. So it's not all me and my amazing program and what's eaten when. I think a big part of the success people have is, is doing it with other people and having that support in the community as well. Yeah, that's that's awesome. something that I can't offer in private practice, which is a big incentive for me to refer to your program because yeah. there's daily check-ins. Like I think twice daily you go live. I'm not sure if that's still yeah. <laughs> Very regular. Yeah, I do check-ins, then I go live. I actually suggest, like, I think it's such a great idea. And so many people are so resistant to help, like getting help. Like I, I would highly suggest someone do my what we do 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 my program and work hand in hand with your healthcare mm -hmm. provider. Do you know what I mean? A natural path. If you can go see a hormone expert, if you can go see whatever that may be, a therapist even and like it doesn't have to be like to do so then therefore they don't ask for help and they just try to do it on their own and i i would love for everyone to be seeing someone like you while they're doing the program to me that'd be the perfect compliment mm -hmm. yeah it is good like even you know therapy group programs it's always good to see a one-to-one -one yeah. therapist because stuff's going to come up you know yeah. like like you said not you know it's not just about eating the wrong foods like we've been told there's a, yeah. a big mindset piece there's guilt there's the diet culture like there's a lot of layers that have to be shed and a lot of emotions probably start to emerge just even being told you can eat fruit, maybe that brings up things for people. Maybe it brings up, you yes. know, so being able to bring that somewhere. Um, yeah, supplements, addressing underlying health issues that may be addressed by the program implicitly, yeah. but to, to address those directly, get some blood work done. Yeah, I think it's it's good to do, yeah, one-to-one. -one. Maybe you see that practitioner once a month. And then in the meantime, they're yeah. touching, you know, there's daily touch points with you in your program and others in the community who have similar goals. Yeah. Yeah. Even supplements. We do like, like we do like a blanket kind of coverage of some sub omega-3, vitamin D, whatever, but you know, really people should be getting indiv individualized care. I know a lot of people don't have access to it. So we like to, you know, bring as much to information as people as possible. And so they can be advocates for their own health. But you know, that's where taking that to the next level in terms of supplementation, get mm -hmm. some tests done, figure out what you've got going on, you know, yeah, I can guess based on the fact that you have weight to lose, you know, there's just certain things that come with that. Um, and certain things that people are deficient in like vitamin D, like magnesium, you know, and you probably could use a little bit more omega three. Um, but yeah, go, go to your healthcare provider, like get those tests done. You know, if you, if you have, if you have the luxury of doing that, I know a lot of people don't. So I'm very mindful to be flippant about just suggesting that. But if people do have the resources to be able to do that, oh gosh, I, I, I think it's in situation. Yes, perfect. There's a little bit of instability in the internet connection, but we are back. What about patients? Let's talk about that because that's actually uh, something I love about your program is that uh, that you, so you can correct me if I got this wrong, but the expectation is that, you know, the body will start shedding weight, not necessarily immediately, although some people might notice that, but it's about a six week, six weeks before there starts to be some shedding for a lot of individuals, which actually yeah. coincides with yeah. uh, getting more insulin sensitive and regulating blood sugar yeah. so that's interesting yeah uh, and that's what I find when people are making like uh, they're addressing the underlying reasons why there might be more uh, weight on the body or more you know the body has more of a tendency to hold on to fat um, so you're addressing the underlying hormonal imbalances and so what do you find like and you know and that again speaking of mindset that that goes up against people's expectations that they're going to start dropping in the first week 
you know, lose 10 know. pounds in five days. Like, you know, in the grocery store, where you look at those, those sort of like uh, women's health mags or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or then when they, they're not losing right away, what's wrong with me? You know, it, it honestly breaks my heart, but I have such mad respect for people who continue. That's the great thing about our program is people do continue to show up you know, without losing any weight. And I, I actually, I'm the worst salesman for my program because I talk about it so freely about people. It's normal for people's weight not to not to be moving in the beginning. It's great if it does, but if it doesn't, then you have faith that your body's working so hard on, like your body doesn't want the fat. So if you give it what it needs and address its needs and you provide it a platform and resources, it'll release that fat. Um, I know it's that sound, seems a little easier said than done, but this is why we have a whole 12-week process for it. Um, but, you know... First of all, it takes time for actual change. Um, and it's the, 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 a whole other thing. But yeah, it's quite it's quite normal for people not to lose weight for the till week six, week seven. And to your point, yeah, that's giving the body enough time to rest you know, uh, inflammation change and it's so normal. And I wish we would normalize that because I have thousands of stories of people just told week six, week seven, huge fall, you know, uh, 40, 60, upwards of over a hundred braid up, just need more time than others because their body's a hot mess. Mm -hmm. Stressed out, broken, down, starved, deprived, neglected, blood sugar out of whack, adrenal fit. Mm -hmm. are you here did you get all that did yes, you get that i did yes yeah. <laughs> i know our connection is a little up i know yeah people don't have patience people don't have patience and you know i i i stopped worrying about people who didn't have patience a long time ago i used to lose a lot of sleep and fight tooth and nail to convince people to just put the time in but i mean you know, it just it takes time and, and just to, to explain the basics of the human body and how long it takes for the body to address issues and heal issues and you know like calm down from epics amount of stress and all of that and but man for the people who stick around and work through that it pays off it just mm -hmm. it it pays off i wish we could bottle it up i wish we could bottle up what you could accomplish in three months for people um, but you know, people are going to want a quick fix. And I, I've, I've stopped trying to save people who are constantly just looking for a quick fix. And mm -hmm. so I have mad respect for people who stick around and put that, listen, anything I've wanted to achieve in my life has never happened on my timeline or as quick as I wanted it to. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Um, he's like building a house. It's great. Anything you no, it's, 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 you know, it's a lot longer for it to be ready. They're in basement. And then when you're living in the house, you forget, you know, that you didn't have a lawn and you had to live with your base, your parents. And you're like, wow, well, we're here. I love our house, but it took longer than you thought. And so does everything takes, including losing weight, healthy, sustainable. The thing we get into when you get into maintenance, like the work doesn't stop mentally. That's a whole other thing you got to work on so you know sustainable maintainable lose your weight forever don't do another diet kind of kind of weight loss is no joke it's mm -hmm. going to take effort and it's going to take time more time than you want but it will work mm -hmm. yeah it, it involves time. yeah like rearranging mindset and beliefs around food and your body and reconnecting yeah. your hunger signals and and like you mentioned your healing underlying issues yes you know and not being at war with your body, right? Like we think of there's something wrong with, there's a lot of shame that the diet industry has created. And so we think, you know, having weight to lose or even the, the idea of weight loss, there's a lot of shame involved, but yeah. you know, our body puts weight on as a response to something. It's yes. your body's working normally. 
the yes. issue is let's remove the the thing that it's trying to protect you against. Oh, I love that. Your body's working normally. Yeah, yeah, that's just your body's normal response to what it's been through. <laughs> totally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I, I'm thinking back to your story, right? Your body's like, oh, I need to store for this crazy famine that we're undergoing. <laughs> like we're running from tigers every day. There's no food. Like I need to have a huge bank account to feel safe. And then as you sort of like, give it more more food and give it you know more resources it's like okay now i can i can rest i'm safe yeah like that beer belly on men is a is a is an amazing visual representation of the body's need to store fat mm. high stress lack of sleep long periods of time without eating it's not beer you know what mm -hmm. it means like you go all day long you're high stress you come home you eat this amazing meal and you overeat it that's like a visual representation of the body feeling a need to store fat with women it's a little different because it's spread differently do you know like we're not like you don't have that where we look like you know but that is like a visual representation of, of the body needing to store fat and it just it just makes sense you know especially with dieting you continually force your body to utilize your fat reserves you're continually reinforcing the need for it it's it's insanity it's craziness it's craziness i know yeah and you look yeah a, a lot of people who uh struggle with weight issues like they don't eat a whole lot to be honest you know like it's it's no. sometimes it's timing and and they're often putting in a lot of effort and uh and it's kind of working against them and yeah I was... go ahead no, I was just going to say the majority of my clients have that 20, having to lose 20 to 40 pounds. That's not going through the McDonald's. I haven't had a client in 30 years that had a weight issue because they're just eating all the wrong things like that. It doesn't exist anymore. It's, it's mm -hmm. so much more complicated and that how much less can you eat? How much more can you exercise? And people aren't losing, you know, it's, it's, it's not about going eating donuts. So that's yeah. not it. Anymore. yeah i wish that'd be an easy fix but yeah i know i've seen the odd usually people figure that on their own though they're like okay it's yes. time for me to stop adding three things of sugar to my coffee in the morning okay i'm good now yeah. <laughs> but i'm like that's a magical unicorn it wasn't my issue yeah. Yeah, exactly. uh, let's talk about hydration that's a big part of the program yes and it's always a part i've been curious about too but uh yeah maybe just jump off of that hydration why is it important what what do you how's that why is it an important part of the program <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because, I mean, I hate to point out the obvious, but I guess it's not obvious. And again, it's ingrained in what people know. They think you need that six to 10 glasses and that's it because that's all they were ever told. Like also, like, I don't even get me started on the Canada Food Guide and what that looked like 20, 30 years ago is a hot mess. Upside so, down. you know, that 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 20 to the, that, you know, six to 10 glasses, you, there's not even a source for that. We you, you can scour the Internet. You can't find that source. And so what I, what and initially what my focus was on, to be honest, when the water conversation started and, and somehow it got to this place where people thought I would offer like a water program and you have to drink crazy amounts. It's not it at all. You have to drink enough for you to be hydrated, which is usually a lot more than what you're used to. And people are like crazy amounts. Um, it actually started with me going down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what was going on and the impact of dehydration on the body. And so funny enough, when I used to work with my individual clients, I wouldn't actually send them, I wouldn't, I used to give them pamphlets and a whole bunch of information and paper, paper when paper was big. And I would, wouldn't get them information on the benefits of drinking water that you needed to drink water in order to lose weight. It wasn't that it was the, it was the effects of dehydration and how detrimental dehydration was on your energy levels, on your cellular function, on your bowel movements, on your whatever. And then in, in educating people on being hydrated properly, I saw a correlation between people's weight moving with the amount of water that they were drinking. And then according to their body's cues, and then they would start drinking more water and then why am I thirsty? And of course I would look into that and, you know, like just really, and gotten to as more and more research, again, when I started this, there was no internet and as more and more research is being done. In fact, there was a study come out not too long ago at the beginning of our winter program about how drinking enough water can, will prolong your life because it's just so essential and no one's drinking enough. I've been telling people and only based on what I figured out from clients, that you need about three and a half liters for basic body function and hydration um, for 30 years. And it wasn't just until about a year and a half ago that Harvard, Harvard, the Mayo Clinic and Cleveland Clinic all, you know, decided upon this 2.7 to three and a half basic body function. Man, I can't even, I can't even tell you the conversations that I've had with people about water over the years that I could have used that study 30 years ago, honestly. And it's just like so many back in the day. Also, I also had the butter versus margarine argument with people. Oh. I can't 
and the eggs are bad for you. I can't. And the water, I just, I can't. It's just like, come on. Um, it's so still happening. Water, all those conversations it's, still, it's, going they on. Are yeah. still Yeah. I always say to people, get out of the eighties. Come on, come on now. Um, but it's, but it's just misinformation and the, and the diet industry loves to dig its heels into misinformation. And so water is just so important. Like, you know, the, the planet is 70% water. When you are born, your body is over 70% water. It obviously decreases as you get older. Uh, most people, um, when people drink more water and they retain water outside of any health issues that they have, their body's retaining it because you're not drinking enough. Back at talk about the 80s when people people wouldn't drink more water because it would cause them to get bloated. So then we take water pills. When in reality, it's just your body desperate for water it's retaining it because you're not drinking enough like it's just in crazy um so you need we're, what so with the program your body releases fat it releases fat when you pee when you poo when you breathe and when you sweat and but just by breathing alone you will blow through 500 milliliters of water something people don't realize mm -hmm. and so you you need water to process food in and out you need water for cellular function you need water for breathing you need water for so many things and so it's not an emphasis on you know you need water to lose weight you just your body needs to be properly hydrated in order to function properly mm -hmm. and at the most optimal level so it's really a mass education on trying to get people to understand how much they need and your body's needs change day to day so if you you know let's say three and a half is the average two point seven three and a half basic body function we're not talking optimal health so that doesn't account for sweating environment so if you are taller you may need more if you have a lot of weight if you have 100 pounds so if you're six foot three and you have 200 pounds to lose you need significantly more water than someone who is five foot and has 10 pounds to lose right so you got to factor that into the average um if you exercise every day you're sweating you need more water if you have salty food you need more water if you drink alcohol you need more water if you take medications you need, you need more water um but so for some reason people are afraid of water they always cite how you're gonna die if you drink too much and there's really not a lot of proof out there or a lot of circumstances or or uh, 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 where people die from drinking a lot more like a lot of water mm -hmm. you have to drink an insane amount like you'd have to get a like literally like force yourself to drink it in order to drink that much now sodium levels are also an issue um that we talk about on the program and is we're very mindful of because when you do a program you start eating healthier you tend not to have as, as much processed foods so people have been told that salt is bad right salt is bad salt is bad when you need salt and so when people go and they eat healthy they tend to eliminate salt altogether and then when you are increasing your water and you're sweating more or detoxing more and your body's releasing fat more right you need to make sure that you're getting in enough salt and your body is properly hydrated and you know you you, you you're topped up in terms of electrolytes and stuff so that's where i think people get the confusion they think drinking water is bad maybe because of low sodium they think water flushes out your nutrients water doesn't flush new so and Mm -mm. I can't deal with that whole conversation. Water doesn't flush your water doesn't flush your fat out, and water doesn't flush your nutrients out. Water doesn't do anything other than keep you hydrated, and then your body's natural detox abilities, you know, kind of release everything it needs to release. But there's a lot of misinformation. Like for example, water. People would say, well, if you're not hungry, drink a glass of water. Well, if that what that does, huh? Mm -hmm. How does water do anything for appetite? The chances are, if you drink water. And you, if you're hungry and you drink a glass of water and after drinking that glass of water, you're not hungry, you were never hungry. You were just yeah. thirsty yeah. because water doesn't do anything. I get this a lot. I'm drinking so much water. I'm not hungry. I'm like, well, because probably because you're eating five, six times a day, nutrient rich food. That's why you're not hungry. That's right. Yeah. For me, <laughs> like, yeah, my, my thirst a lot of the time feels like hunger and I have to remind myself, like, just try to drink because you just ate. It's interesting. Yeah. But yeah. it is it's dehydration. Yeah. 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 So water's water's just we, we as we just need water and we need a lot more than what people are used to and think that they need. And, you know, for it can be a game changer, especially more and more science is coming out about, especially if you have health issues, how important it is to be properly hydrated. So, mm -hmm. yes. So water's key, not a water program, not about drinking more and more and more, not about flushing anything out, but just being properly hydrated, yeah. really trying to get your body as healthy as possible a healthy normal functioning body has no need to store excess fat so it'll be happy to release it if you give it the resources and the platform and the time and energy and focus to do it you know so water is a big part of that yeah this is amazing this is great and i love it. i love the emphasis on being healthy in order to achieve the outcome i know in the world yeah. of marketing we market as the outcome you have to market your results so it ends up being a weight loss program 
Um, yes, this. Can I yes. just interrupt and say I? So this was my realization many years ago that the things I was doing to just be healthy, it, the side effect was weight loss. And so I originally um, marketed my plan as a lifestyle plan and I couldn't sell it to anybody. People oh were like, God. yeah, I great, but I want to lose weight. I'm like, you will lose weight. And they're like, yeah, but no, I want to do a diet. I'm like, well, it is a diet. I'm just, it's a lifestyle. And that's why I, have, I think I have get triggered when people call it a lifestyle because it's, it's like a means to an end and it's a diet. Um, but yeah, no, I couldn't sell that thing to save my life as a lifestyle. And people are like, I don't want it. You're like, lose weight. They're like, oh, sign me up. <laughs> yeah. But, nice. yeah. but this is, you know, I have a lot of compassion and I might add this to the intro, but I have a lot of compassion for the healthy at any size movement. But I think the key there is healthy at any size. Right. And so the, I think there is a range to healthy body types, but this idea that, you know, when you aim for weight loss at the cost of all else, you, you can force your body to lose fat. What happens after usually you're probably going to gain it back and worse than underlying health issues. But when you address those underlying health issues, you know, and it may be very well through a program and through a certain style of eating and, you know, a, a way that you look at food and a shift in mindset, but that will result in, in fat loss. If that's your body's optimal representation of, of its true health, right? Like if that's your optimal size, um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it's healthy at any size. Like, cause you can get someone who's like skinny fat. I call it right. That's they're right. skinny. They're yeah. they're not healthy. They're whatever. And I think what's 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 happened is the diet industry has gone through a shift where, um, like the '80s, they're popular. Everyone dieted. We talked about it, and now we're start, starting to understand the detriment behind people's mental health with dieting, mm -hmm. the, the the physical impact and lowering people's metabolisms. Just you know, just robbing, starving, depriving people's bodies of nutrients, and it's not healthy. So we got to this place where diets don't work and then the body positivity movement which i love unfortunately the body positivity movement though is tied into weight somehow and that's so sideways because you know to me body positivity there's a lot of people out there who have like um disabilities and you know physical things happening that they can't change they can't diet they can't lose weight they can't change at all and their self-love for themselves should be there regardless and i tell people you should love yourself you know, at 250, the same that you love yourself at 125. And so that there's a bit of mis, mi, mixed messaging in that love yourself, like, of course, love yourself, love yourself at 250 pounds. However, that voice inside of your head that is telling that you are uncomfortable in your body, and you could feel better, and you could drink more water, and you can get some sleep, shoving that deep down inside and trying to squash that and quiet that is not self love. That's, you know what I mean? That to me, that's you're ignoring yourself. That's not self-love. Love yourself at that size, but ignoring your body's cues and it telling you, hey, you know what I mean? Could you drink a little bit more water? Could you move more? Could you whatever? I'm not, I'm not saying that you also can't feel great at any size, but we just know that every extra pound of fat is hard on the body. It just is, no matter how you know, loving you are of yourself or whatnot. It just, it's hard on your body. It carries inflammation. It's stressful. It's all of those things. So it's very complicated that sort of, you know, the body positivity movement. And then there's both sides of that. You have people who are present as healthy because they're skinny and they're stressed out. They're starving, they're depriving, or they're, do you know what I mean? They're not on the verge of a heart attack. <laughs> That's definitely not healthy. So it's a very complicated um, space right now, the diet industry. And then you don't even get me started on all the new drugs and stuff that they're coming out with. And so dieting is in a really weird space. And I'm all about being in tune and I'm all about inclusivity and I'm all about loving yourself. I just think you have to be very careful when you're tying the conversation of self-love, self-acceptance into, into the size of anyone's body at the end of the day is, is a bit problematic, I think. Uh, yeah, that's, those are great points. Yeah, that, that was really yeah. well put. It's yeah, like lo love yourself now. Yes. And it today. Doesn't, well, isn't that the Gandhi quote? Like, it's only when I fully accepted myself, then I could change something like that. <laughs> yeah. And the, the thing is, is you can love yourself and be as healthy as you possibly can and still be in the pursuit of change. Still want to lose weight, still want to get healthier, still you want to get in more tuned, you know, like that's that, that's that thing is that only you know what it's like to look and feel in your body. And if you're happy at 200 pounds and you feel amazing, then good on ya. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. that your mind, your healthy mindset can be more important than, you know, someone who weighs less 
and they're ragging on themselves with the last five pounds. Like the stress of that can, you know what I mean? Can so, yeah. It's yeah. If you feel concept. great, you feel great. And you feel great. You feel great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Great. yeah. And then I guess my last thing is so in the research that's being done. And, you know, you're presenting at the obesity conference. What yeah. are you finding people are getting out of the program? And maybe, I know, I'm sure you have a lot to say about that, but what are some of the things that you're discovering beyond? So the, yeah. first of all, I'm not discovering. We have uh, Ruth Kane, Professor Ruth Kane and her team at the University of Ottawa. So they're very, uh, like, I have to be, I'm not involved in it at all, but okay. I obviously talk about it because it's my program. I'm so excited. And I meet with her on the research because I can't be involved because then it'd be biased. But most importantly, what they're learning is the the clinical amount of weight that people are losing is blowing every other diet and every other weight loss drug on the market out of the water. So to be to be a clinically a clinical diet or clinical success with weight loss, you have to be able to lose 5% of your weight within six months. And we had something like 74% of people losing at least 5%, up to 24% of their weight in three months. And then another thing that we're studying is the sustainability factor behind the living method, which I'm really, it's one thing to lose it in a healthy way like that. I think people have always known that that could be done and we've just put together a great system for it. But the sustainability factor behind it is, is really exciting. And then the, the health issues that people are walking away from, like this is so much bigger than weight loss. This is an online platform to even potentially teach people in remote communities how to be healthy. You go to your doctor, he says, go get, go lose weight, be healthy. What does that mean to people? And this is like a, how to do it 101. And statistically people are um, making a real impact in their, in their, in their health and wellness and health issues. People going from pre, pre-diabetic into diet, into regular normal range, people decreasing their uh, diabetes medication, their thyroid medication, people getting off cholesterol medications, um, blood pressure medications that they've been taking for years. Like it's that that that's the shit that gets me excited. I don't know if I can say that on your podcast, but you go ahead. Yeah, it's all it's good. Good. <laughs> that's the stuff that gets me really super excited. That that this is where a big picture with our with our with the study that they're doing is actually the online learning process, the systematic way of people are learning is is one thing that they're actually studying, and then the other thing is the sustainability factor. So like um things like um. I don't have the stats on me. I wish I did. And um, we're actually working on our website where we're actually adding those stats, but, you know, better relationship with food and themselves and, you know, just all sorts of amazing things that people are, it's, a, it's, it's tangible. What people are accomplishing besides weight loss on our program, it's tangible. You can do a crappy diet and lose a lot of weight and sure you get healthier because there's less stress on your joints and, and healthier because there's less inflammation because you have less fat, but it's not actively helping you with any of your health issues. And that's one of the one of the things that we're finding is that the living method is actually helping people get healthier. They're, they're losing their weight in a sustainable way and in a way that mentally is beneficial for people too. And that's huge. So, so it's, it's very exciting. I can't wait. And, and, and also with Ozempic and these weight loss drugs, like, yeah, that's, I get why people are going there, but we know that they're, those aren't sustainable either. They're not teaching you anything about anything and you stop taking them and you're going to gain that weight back. And, and we are actually trending to see better results on our program in the short amount of time people are doing it then those those drugs can actually help you achieve so it's it's a new it's a it's a it's a non-rocket science way to lose weight but it's it's new compared to what people have been doing and what people know that's out there and i think that we are we're actually going to have a massive impact on the diet industry and we're going to let people know there's a there's another way to lose weight and in a way that's actually going to start affecting those obesity rates i hope that the living method my goal for it is that we're going to start to affect obesity rates. We're going to actually see them start coming down rather than climbing year over year over year. And that's that's our end game and our goal. So the, the, the studies are exciting. Then we want to start doing like independent studies where people are actually studying and following people. We do have focus groups and stuff that we do. But bigger than that, we really want to expand the research that's being done on the living method. I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more excited about it. This you can't tell. <laughs> if you can't great tell. work. This is so good. <laughs> it's so exciting. It is. Can people Super find you? Uh, Google Gina Livy, um, the, the Gina Livy.com is the only place you can print. We, we've had some knockoff sites and people trying to capitalize on what we're doing. And so very mindful of that scams and such. So Gina Livy.com is the only place that we sell our program. You can go to our website. I'm really proud of this. It's completely transparent. You don't have to scroll through for, you don't have to scroll for five days to figure out how much it costs or what we're selling. It's all right there. Um, you can contact customer support, support, ask questions. We have a whole food page. We, we have so much on our website.
website. Um, you literally can just kind of go through it and, and find out everything that you know, need to know FAQs and whatnot. Also on socials, Gina Livy, um, we, we have a, we have a big social presence, an amazing uh, community. If you want to see real people and what they're doing, uh, visit Livy Losers. They're, they're kind of like, it's a play on losing and Livy, my name and the Livy method, obviously. Um, we, we like to be losers. Um, it's sort of our, we call ourselves a bunch of losers because it's cool to be losers because I wasn't really all that cool, believe it or not, growing up. So this is my chance to be cool. Um, follow like hashtag Livy Method on socials. You'll you'll see all sorts of you know our, our community and find us and yeah we're we're there we're 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 there and uh, we're accessible. So come join us. Come find us. Come ask about us. We're we're happy to help. Beautiful. And there'll be uh, links in the show notes for everyone interested and you can get started. It's very affordable, very accessible. Yes. So that's, that's also a great thing. Yeah. $75. Um, mm-hmm. is, in fact, uh, we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a bit of a, the, our fall group is our 20th group. So we're going to do a big announcement about that and maybe go back to some of our original pricing. I don't tell anyone yet, but um, um, yeah, we want it to be affordable. We, our program, the value that you get probably would be in the thousands of dollars and um. We, we want it to be accessible to people, which is why we love our online platform, our app, our book, our resources, and we want it to be um, affordable. That's a big one and, and doable and sustainable. Those are sort of our company mantra. So affordability is really huge for us. We, we, we know so many people have already spent enough time, energy and money on weight loss, and we want this to be one last thing and we want them to have nothing to lose but weight legit. So um, yeah, the, the price is insanely, ridiculously, amazingly affordable. And if people can't afford it we always say reach out we'll be happy to kind of help you out there as well we want it to be able to be accessible for everyone so yeah there you have it everyone you need to check (laughs) this out thanks so much gina for joining thank you